back in 1991, uh, my son, he played drums, and uh, I bought him a set, and I thought they were good drums at the time, and things started breaking on the drums, so friends of mine that were drummers said, well, years ago, drums were built here in the United States, and they lasted a long time, and you didn't have these problems, so I said, well, I guess I'll give it a try. I've always done woodworking. I did it ever since high school. I took every class that I could in industrial arts and metalworking, so... I started building the drums. Uh, I didn't know a lot about it, did a lot of research on it, made a lot of drums. A lot of drums were burnt, and uh, people would come in and say, what are you gonna do with those? And uh, they're gonna go to the burn pile. Oh no, those look good enough to, s I could use those. I go, no, they're not going out until they're right. A lot of people say, well, you're lucky to have a dad that makes drums or drumsticks. Way back, I would, when I would start building the drums, and he needed a drum head on his drum. I, was, I found out that he wasn't replacing the head. He would just go in my, get into my stock and he'd get a whole new drum out. And I was starting, drums were missing and I had drums sitting in, in boxes with uh, heads on them that were worn out. And I said, hey, you can't be doing this anymore. You know, you can replace the head on that drum. My son does still play drums. From time to time, he plays in a uh, Christian uh, praise team at his church. Uh, He's 38 years old now. He started out when he was 12 years old. He likes it. He can come in here and uh, get free sticks whenever he wants them. <laughs> I didn't want to use a lot of parts from other companies, so everything that I could make myself, I do myself. I didn't know a lot about metalworking. Well, I was fortunate there was a fellow that lived here in the area, and he was a retired tool and die maker. And I went and talked to him and started picking his brain and ended up spending about 10 years with him. So I got into making my own lugs. That's one of the most distinctive part of the drum is a lug itself. I'm going to make this wooden lug here, which goes on the outside of the drum. What I'm getting ready to do now is make all those steps in that, in that particular lug. I'm able to take a wooden lug, whatever the shell's made out of, and make that lug the same as the shell itself this file, contouring it. Seventeen thirty seconds in diameter. I built a set of drums for a fella and he, he came here and uh, to pick his drums up and we finished them up and he said, well I'd like to play these but I don't have a pair of sticks. And I said, well, let me try to whittle you a pair out. So I made him a crude pair, then I got to thinking about it. I said, well, that's something I could do. A lot of drummers like is white, gr straight grain hickory. And your white wood is the reason you use it is because of the flexibility of it. It has some flex to it. Your heart wood, the brown center part of this wood isn't, doesn't have that characteristics. So what drummers want, they don't want to take that shock all the way up through their hand because over years and years of playing, they're gonna have problems with their hands. It was, it's been ripped down, it's been taken through a joiner and a planer, okay? These pieces have to be perfectly flat all the way around because if I run a piece through this machine here that has a slight curvature to it, this machine will not straighten that out. Even though this is flat, wood being the way it is, it still has movement in it. So I can get a drum, a, a rod that comes out of here that's not gonna be straight. Therefore, it's no good. It's no good. A drumstick has to roll straight. I've done it for so long, and it, over a period of time, 22 years, uh, I would talk thousands of people on the phone, and drummers would always, they're very inquisitive people. They want to know, how did you do that? How did you learn how to do that? What type of machine? Just over a period of time, I, I decided to if students can come in here and they can learn from the ground up uh, what I've learned in 22 years on how to build an excellent snare drum. The classes involve uh, building a snare drum, I have a class on stick building, I have one on percussion blocks. A student comes into the class, they're going to they're gonna have a particular type of stick that they want to do. Uh, here I offer 23 different tips that I've come up with over the years. They can do that stick or they can design a stick that they want. I show them how to make a cutter, how to grind this cutter out to make that stick and go through the whole process of making a pair of sticks. So it's rather unique. If I wasn't doing this, it would always be something in woodworking I've done. Uh, I, built, I built this house, it's a hexadome house, uh, designed and built it and it took me three years. I've built all types of furniture. Uh, 
I do a piece of furniture, it's something that you're not going to be able to go into a store and see every day. I've built caskets, wooden caskets out of uh, maple, ash, walnut. Uh, I've done quite a few of those over the years. Uh, it's just something that I love to do, work with a piece of wood, be able to bend it, shape it, and look at a tree or look at a, a figure in a piece of wood and incorporate it into a drum shell. And I can just picture it in my head what it's going to look like when it's done before I do it. I'm a woodworker. <laughs> I like what I do. Um, sometimes, uh, I don't know, I spend a lot of time at it. I can put 20 hours a day in down here and it doesn't bother me. It's not like a 20 hour day.